All right, we're going to follow up with the fundamental theorem of calculus and start to try to actually use it. If we start with the worksheet we did where we found the integration of a function on an interval from A to B, we did it by area under the curve. And that's great for the first five problems because the area under those curves were creating squares, rectangles, trapezoids, maybe even, what do we have, a quarter of a circle in number three. So the problem was when we got to number six, though. We do remember that uh, when we got to number six, this question is the integration of a parabola. So we already know that from two to six, we're not going to make a trapezoid. It's going to be close to a trapezoid, but this side is really a curve. So we did right-hand Riemann sums to practice, just so we could practice right-hand Riemann sums. Uh, but even one trapezoid would have been a more accurate answer. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus is even is an accurate answer all the time. So let's review again what that really is saying. Okay, so the fundamental theorem of calculus says for the integral from a to b of little f of x dx, which just as a sidebar, when you integrate a function, you always need to write dx. Because if nothing else, remember f of x is the height of your shapes and dx is the delta x, the distance across the bottom of your shapes. So if anything, you're multiplying base times heights. And it is very important to show integration of a function with the dx after it. So the integration of little f is capital F from A to B, which does mean capital F of B minus capital F of A. We do have to remember, though, that little f is the derivative of big F. So if we know that is the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can start to try to think about it in terms of, let's say one function is 5x, let's say one function was x squared, and let's say one function was the ln of x. So if you were to actually take their derivatives, which would be capital F prime, but capital F prime is little f. So as long as little f is the derivative, little g and little x, you can h, you can find those now. So the derivative of 5x is 5, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of ln of x, remember, is 1 over x. So taking that information, we can start to look again at integration of a 5 dx. So when we're integrating 5 dx, where 5 is little f, that is, the anti, that is um, capital F prime. So basically, we're looking to see what gives us an answer of 5, and we already know it would be 5x. Now, the derivative of 5x is 5, but the derivative of 5x plus 1 is 5. The derivative of 5x plus 2 is 5. The derivative of 5x plus any number is 5. So you are required to put a c when you have an indefinite integral. When you do not have a b or an a value here, it's an indefinite integral, and you should always put plus c, including on delta math. So if you're integrating 2x dx, I remember 2x was the answer, right, for x squared. So the integral of 2x should be x squared, which you're checking by taking the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So you're on the right track. And you have to put your plus c. And just for one more practice, the integral of 1 over x dx, remember 1 over x was the answer when you did the derivative of ln of x. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x, and you need that plus c because there's no definite integral signs um, and no interval given. So that means you can go back here and start to fill in the shortcuts now. The integral of a constant is a constant times x plus c because the derivative of a number times x is always the number. The integral of x to a power now, we know the derivative of power goes down by 1, so the integral should go up by 1. The only problem is you have um, the derivative always would have brought something in front. So you need to divide by that something in front so that it's a coefficient, 1 over k plus 1, so that when you do take its derivative, everything crosses out nicely, and you would end up with x to the k. 
if we were going to do the antiderivative of 1 over x, you can always say it's the ln of x plus c. And since the derivative of e to the x was itself, the integral of e to the x is also itself. And again, you need plus c because the derivative of e to the x plus any number would stay what we have in green, e to the x. Now, for these next two, remember we had that um, trig ladder. Sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, negative sine of an angle, and negative cosine of an angle. So if you wanted to do derivatives, we would go down, right? The derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, and the derivative of negative cosine, you'd have to go back to the top and say sine. But if I wanted to do antiderivative, I work up. So the antiderivative of negative cos is negative sine. The antiderivative of negative sine is cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. And the antiderivative of cosine, you start back down here at negative cosine. So that mnemonic device could help us to figure out that the integral of sine of x will be negative cosine of x plus any constant. The integral of cosine, if you work backwards from cosine, you go to sine of x. And one little trick that we should announce is the integral of a constant times a function. Always consider pulling out the constant and then just concentrating on the integral of f of x dx because that will make it easier when you try to integrate f of x when the examples are not as obvious as some of the ones that we're starting to discuss. It's nice to pull that constant out if you can.